Greetings everyone, and welcome back. I hope you have been well. It has been some time since our last reading. Today we shall continue our series on European chivalry, learning from the works of medieval knights, and specifically French troubadour. In our previous reading, Bertrand de Bon gave us a beautifully vivid description of his standards of nobility and the aesthetic majesty of the medieval chevalier, illuminating us on the resplendent grandeur of French knights and their vibrantly colorful displays of heraldry upon the battlefield. I must lament, while some antiquarians attribute the medieval period to darkness and discord, Bertrand and his poetry paint a dazzling picture of these bygone ages. Let us now follow his example with poetry of a similar sort, written by comparably famed chevaliers. May we learn from them and rediscover the words they found most true, carrying with us knightly lessons to honor our forebears. For theirs is the way of chivalry, their words the keys to our prosperity. For those who are new to the channel, it is our ambition here to explore the code of chivalry and similarly noble creeds through poetry, both recent and archaic, as this is how we can truly understand the virtues of the past and use them to shape ourselves, helping to build a better world. If you wish to read today's pieces for yourself, you can find them linked in the description. But now, relax and take heart, for this poetry is the stuff of chivalry. Our first poem comes to us from Guillaume de Poitiers, Life from 1071 to 1127. A.D. William or Guillaume the Ninth, called the Troubadour, was Duke of Aquitaine and Gascony, and Count of Poitou, as William the Seventh, between 1086, when he was aged only 15, and his death. Refusing to take part in the First Crusade of 1098, he was one of the leaders of the Minor Crusade of 1101, which was a military failure. He was the first troubadour, that is, the first recorded vernacular lyric poet in the Occitan language. Threatened with excommunication several times for his dissolute life and challenges to church authority, he was later reconciled. He married his stepdaughter Anor to his son, later Gilhelm X, and in turn, their daughter Eleanor, Duchess of Aquitaine and Countess of Poitou, became Queen of France, and by her second marriage to Henry, Duke of Normandy, later Henry II, became Queen of England also. She was the mother of the young King Henry, Richard Coeur de Lyon, Geoffrey of Brittany, and John Lackland. His poem is Abbey le Dolcher del Thème Novel. The woods are leafing out. Out of the sweetness of the spring, the branches leaf, the small birds sing, each one chanting in its own speech forming the verse of its new song. Then is it good a man should reach, for that for which he most does long. From finest sweetest place I see, no messenger, no word for me. So my heart can't laugh or rest, and I don't dare try my hand, until I know, and can attest, that all things are as I demand. This love of ours, it seems to be, like a twig on a hawthorn tree, that on the tree trembles there, 
All night, in rain and frost it grieves, Till morning, when the rays appear Among the branches and the leaves. So the memory of that dawn to me, When we ended our hostility, And a most precious gift she gave, Her loving friendship and her ring. Let me live long enough, I pray, beneath her cloak my hand to bring. I've no fear that tongues too free might part me from sweet company. I know with words how they can stray in gossip, yet that's a fact of life. No matter if others boast of love, we have the loaf, we have the knife. Guillaume's second poem is Farai un ver de traînier. I've made this rhyme completely free of sense. I've made a song devoid of sense. It's not of me or other men, of love or being young again, or other course. Rather in sleep I found it when astride my horse. I know not what hour I was born, I'm not happy, nor yet forlorn. I'm no stranger, yet not well worn. Powerless, I, who was by fairies left one morn, on some hill high. I can't tell whether I'm awake, or I'm asleep, unless men say, it almost makes my poor heart break with every sigh. Not worth a mouse though, my heartache, St. Marshall Fye. I'm ill, I'm afraid of dying, but of what I hear know nothing. I'd call a doctor for his learning, but which, I say, he's a good doctor if I'm improving, not if I die. I've a lover, but who is she? She, by my faith, I never could see. Nothing she did to hurt or please, so what say I? In my house, no French or Norman shall ever lie. I never saw her, yet love her true. She never was faithful, or untrue. I do well when she's not in view. Not worth a cry. I know a nobler, fairer too, to any eye. I've made the verse, don't know for who. I'll send it on to someone new. Who'll send it on towards Anjo, or somewhere nigh. So it's counter key from his casket he'll send by and by. A note on this poem. The last two lines remain perplexing, but suggest that Guillaume was inviting a similarly ironic song, a counter or duplicate, in reply. This next song by Guillaume is Pieux Vezem de Nouvelles Fleurir. Since we see, again, Blossoming. Since we see fresh flowers blowing, Field and meadow greenly glowing, Stream and fountain crystal flowing, Fair wind and breeze, It's right each man should live bestowing, Joy as he please. Of love I'll speak nothing but good, Why have I not had all that I could, Likely I've had all that I should, for readily, it grants joy to one who's understood love's boundary. It's been the same all of my days, I've had no joy of love, always, too late now to change my ways, for knowingly, I've done much of which my heart says, that's nullity. For this reason I win less pleasure, what I can't have I always treasure, 
And yet the saying proves true forever. For certainly, to good heart comes good luck in measure. Suffer joyfully. You will never prove faithful to love unless you're submissive too, and to neighbors and strangers you act quite humbly, and to all who live within its view obediently. Obedience we must ever show to others if we'd love, and so it's fitting that from us should flow true courtesy. We must not speak at court as though born vilely. This verse I'll say to you is worth more if you'll comprehend it first, and praise the words I gave them birth consistently. I too will praise, as finest on earth, its melody. My Stephen, though here I keep my birth, there presently, I trust you'll read this, and of its worth, give guarantee. I hope you have enjoyed today's video, and have learned something from this reading on nightly poetry. If you would like to hear more, please like our videos and subscribe to our channel. Peace be with you. Until next time, we speak of chivalry and poetry.